Hello everybody, this is Debbie with Silly Goose Nursery. Um, I am going to show you how to do your second layer um, on the, well, any complexion. One I am doing right now, sorry I lost my stick here, um, is Serena. and She's going to be African American. Oh, there it is. Um, oops, sorry, let me turn down the... There we go. Turn down the air purifier so it's not quite so loud in here. I have that to try and get some of the dust out of the air so I don't have as much dust settled on the dolls. Um, this, I'm still using the same varnish, the uh, Americana Soft Touch Varnish by DecoArt. And now this is going to be our first layer of color. And so I'm just taking a little bit, just like that much. Because that's going to, again, remember your, most of it's going to be water. And you don't want to make up too much. Otherwise, like I said in the last video, you get... Um, dry paint on the sides and then that will get into the paint and just you'll have all these specks in your paint because that doesn't tend to or in my case anyway it doesn't t doesn't tend to remix very well I don't know if there's a way to make it mix better or whatever but and I'm using the Master's Touch Primary Red. This is the intense color. And it just is a better... Oops, I forgot my paper towel. Um, it's just a more intense color. So as you add the water, it's not going to wash it out as much. Another thing you want to be careful of is if you open it and get the paint out like this, you're going to get dry stuff on here and that can also be um, that can also get in your paint so it's better to unscrew the cap and take it from in here so I'm just going to take a little bit you want about the same amount that what of what's in your what's in here so you want equal amounts. I usually try and clean it off just to make sure there's no on dry pieces. And you could do that with this too, but there just tends to be, no matter what you do, it's going to get dried on in there. In the cap. So that's why you twist, I, I twist off the cap. I don't remember who told me that. I learned that from a different artist, but... I'm sure lots of them do that. So you want to mix it really good in here. Okay, and then see, you can't really see. I mean, there's still a lot of color in there. So you want to add, and again, using distilled water. I think, I believe I got this at um, these bottles at... Uh, Hobby Lobby, either Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's. Those are the three craft stores I go to. So you're just going to add some water and mix it up really good. And then the way you're going to know that you have it diluted enough is if you turn it like this and then it goes clear real quick. quick. And that one didn't go clear as fast as I like it to. I'll try and do it towards the camera this time so you guys can see better. Okay. I do that and then I see you can still see it doesn't quite go clear. So I'll add a little more. And usually once I get to the spot that I like, I usually add just a tiny bit more because the more translucent, 
So that's about right. So, so if I can do it, it's kind of hard for me to do it from this angle. But if you can see, see how the back right here turns clear real quick? Oh, here, let me try it doing. See how it turns clear real quick. And once I get to that point, I usually add one more tiny little spritz. Or not spritz, but a few more drops just to make sure. Because that's what's going to make your uh, Reborn look more lifelike if you have very, very, very translucent paint. Um, let's see. I got the new Levi sitting here. I just put on his, his uh, varnish layer after I touched him up and gave him a little more. Oops. That's washing him out. I gave him a little more rouge on his cheeks. And again, his hair is not going to stick up like this. As a matter of fact, he has a very, very beautiful swirl in the back of his head but he needs his hair brushed and right now I ha I took and wet his hair and went made it go back like this so that it was out of his face when I varnished it otherwise his hair is gonna lay down and he has beautiful beautiful hair and it's very um, very high quality I'll pack here. Okay, sorry. So, um, I was looking at my. Let me turn that back on a little bit. I was looking back on here at my layers. And I noticed that everything, they're the same with Caucasian and African American up until I do the fat creases. So, um, I'm going to do one, this one video series uh, of the first one, two, three, four, five, six layers, and that's gonna be for all Caucasians. And then after that, then I will show you how I finish off my African American ones. But instead of showing you one series of six um, layers in Caucasian and one series of six in African American, when they're the exact same thing, just know that the first six layers you use no matter what Caucasian. Okay. So, and I've already cleaned off the doll using my cookbookie brush to loosen any hair and dust and then the painter's tape to lift that up like I showed you last time. So here is Serena and here is my makeup sponge I've already torn off the top of. I'm going to give that a little spritz. And then I'm going to put just a little bit on there and squeeze it all around so that it disperses. And then we're going to start at the back of our head so we make sure that it's the color that we want. And you're not really going to see that much color. I didn't put enough paint on there. It's, you can tell because it's... Sorry, I have a hair on here. Okay, so you can tell because um, it wasn't very wet going on there. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it right there. So see how it's more wet. And you can see there's just a slight tinge between the red that I just put on here and the top of the head. It's just a very slight change of red and I need to get this okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to use this. Because she's so tiny, she's a preemie, I'm just using a small brush to get the, the creases in here. Because I don't want a lot of... of uh, paint in those creases since she's so tiny. There we go. And then we'll blot that all the way around. And I like putting, um, the reason I have the paper towel here is one, so that if I need to get uh, liquid off the sponge, if I get too much liquid on it, and I, I can just pounce it off. Um, two, it gives me a clean surface. Because these, I love using these. I got this at Fred Meyer's. It was like five bucks. Um, but it tends to, like, tear and stuff tends to stick to it a little bit. So by putting down a fresh paper towel, I know I've got a fresh layer without any dust or hair or anything on it. And then we're going to take one of our brushes here, one of our like mop type brushes. This one's not a mop, this one's just a makeup sponge, but as long as it's just got a, you know, rounded edge and it's all, and a lot of, of, um, you know, bristles. Then it's fine. I have different sizes. So I've got, whoops, don't want to get any red on her anywhere. I don't want it. Uh, so anything like this, some of these, these are almost all paint, paint brushes here. I mean, not paint brushes, makeup brushes. This is a mop brush that's a paint brush. So any of those will work just fine. And I'm going to get a little more red on there. And just continue around the head. Making sure to get the creases. You might be able to see. Actually, you can probably see it better if I turn that off and turn that on you can see the difference like this is more red than her cheek is her cheek is more pale because i haven't done that yet and again when you're doing the ears and i'm just going to use that little brush to make sure i get in all the creases And this is pretty much you're gonna the way you're gonna do the next what, three layers, as we do a red and a blue and a yellow. Um, so I lost my little brush there. I put it back with the other ones. Okay. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the question box below, and I will try and get to them to answer any questions. Um, I have quite a bit going on. So, my mom passed away in March, and I'm trying to go through her and my dad's house and uh, get rid of stuff. So I'm trying to work making my dolls and do that and keep the house clean. Plus I have health problems, so that makes it a little more difficult too. So give me, the whole reason I'm telling you, why I'm telling you this is all I'm saying is give, give me about a week and then I should be able to, sometime in that week I will try and get all your questions answered. I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be. I've been doing this for about two years. 
so I can't guarantee I can answer every question, but if I know the answer, I will answer it. And I will answer it as quick as I can. Oops, I forgot to get the inside of the nose. That's important. And the nose crease is on the side. And this is another thing I use a paper towel for is getting the excess um, moisture off the brush from it soaking up the paint. ears and behind the ears real good. The bigger babies I try and like squeeze this so that I can get in the ear more and get out more liquid so I don't get as much on my uh, mop brush but her her and Luke's ears are too tiny for that. If you didn't see the first video Luke is her twin brother. And I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to, um, you know, a little more, if I'm going to sell them together or not. I think what I'm going to try and do is sell them together. And if they don't sell together, then I'll sell them separate. But Okay, so that is our second layer. Oops. Doesn't look like I got her chin very well. There we go. Okay. So now you're going to go around, and I won't make you watch me do all this, but you're just going to go around and make sure if any dust or anything got in the paint that you take it off right away before um, it cures in the, the paint. So... And then I just go over it a little bit more in case I took off any any color when I was doing that. Sometimes this tape works when it's after I paint it and sometimes it doesn't. And I'll show you what I use. I use these little makeup things. I use these little sticks. I found these at... Um, Joanne Fab or not Joanne Fab, sorry, Hobby Lobby, over by the um, over by the paint, the craft paints, not the artist paint, but the craft paints, um, and they just have a little. Let's see, Let's see if I can make it. It just has like a little tip on the end of it, but that tip's got a bunch of little hairs. So be ready to try and get those hairs off the doll before it dries if you use that. Or I'll use, use a Q-tip. Or I also got this from, I believe it was McPherson's. It's called a nib holder. And this has little fibers in it too that can kind of come off. So I just kind of go with these first because this isn't going to get stuff little fibers on there on your doll and if I can't do that um, I also if it's something that's already dried in the on the paint that's already cured um, then I'll take a toothpick and you just wet the end of it that you're where you're, or the spot you're gonna be using and then just kind of lightly um, scrape that over it and it'll take off just a little bit at a time a little bit of paint at a time so that um, so that you don't take off too much paint so there is her second layer on her head done I'll um, come by here in a little bit. I'm going to pause this now and I'll come back and do the rest of her or do 
one more arm and one one arm and one leg not the whole body but I'll do an arm and a leg to show you guys putting this layer on so I'll see you in a few minutes okay guys I'm back um so it's now a couple days later I haven't had time to finish this up Riley Pesh. <laughs> excuse my dog he's Nobody's allowed to walk or drive down his street without his permission. <laughs> anyway, so I am just sitting here um, mixing my paint back up since it's been sitting for a couple days. I kind of, the paint kind of globs a little bit, so you have to work it back in like these little pieces here. Okay, and I gotta make sure that it is still add a little tiny bit of water left or in it. Because I wanna make sure that it is still as transparent as I want it. So again you wanna make sure that when you let me do it closer here. When you go and tilt it back that it glows goes clear real quick. Oops. When it goes back, how how fast it goes clear where it was. Hey, calm down, dogs. My dogs are being spazzes today. Probably because they're probably going stir crazy from not getting to go out in the backyard, but it's been raining here every day. And if I let them go in the backyard when it's raining, they just come in soaking wet. All right, I'm going to take my paper towel that I've had sitting here and I'm going to flip it over. That way I have the clean side. There's no dust or anything on it. And we were working on Miss Serena. And we got her head all done with the red. Whoops. She, her head fell over. All right, so now we're going to do, I'll show you an arm and a leg. Which is pretty much the exact same thing, but I'll do one just to, just to make sure that you got you guys get it here. So I'm gonna take my kabuki brush, and it also helps to put a paintbrush in these. It gives you more to handle because you want to keep your fingers on here, and it's kind of hard to do that. So. I don't want to do that above the paper towel that I just flipped over. So you're just using the kabuki bus brush to loosen any um, dust or lint or hair or anything that got on it. Switch to my reading glasses here. And then we'll... I probably should have found what I needed before then. There it is. Okay. Put a little bit of water in here. So that I can wet my little makeup spongy thing. And I'm just going to double check and make sure. Riley, get off. Hey! Sorry, I have rats in a cage over here and he likes to get up on it. And I don't trust him to not bite their tails off, so he's not allowed to do that. They're in a big um, critter nation cage. A double critter nation cage. So they're in the top part, so he can't get to them. Other than possibly their tails if it goes... If they go in between, so... He's never in here alone because I just do not trust him. He's an Australian Shepherd. So. Yeah, I need this brush. I have a little piece of hair on here. There you go. I got it. Okay. 
I had mostly everything off of here. Okay. So now again, oops, I need to get my little makeup sponge. Oops. So I get we're trying to do something one handed. So again, we're going to spray it. Just moisten it a little bit because that helps it absorb the paint and then we'll move it all around so it's all over the sponge and we're going to start with the fingers because it's it's just easier to go out from the fingers and go back up if you go the other way then your fingers might mess up the paint you put up here if you get too high on there so plus you can hold on like this so it's more stable when you're doing it. Whereas if you just painted there, you wouldn't want to do that. So, just little things I've learned from different videos I watched. I should have done this first. Got my fingers individually and all the make sure I get in all the creases here. Dab it off. I'm going to take a little bit of, I got too much paint on here. If it gets too much paint on it or too wet, it won't really absorb very well and get the paint off of there. So every once in a while you want to just dab the paint off of there when you're doing this. And then I'm going to come over and get my mop brush and dab it so that I get all the places that, it, that the, it pools like in between the fingers right here that the sponge can't really get in there. So if you use a mop brush, and this I believe is a makeup brush. Yeah, fluffy blender. <laughs> Makeup brushes are actually really, really good for doing this. Uh, for painting and stuff. Well, not for the painting aspect as much as for the absorbing the uh, paint, getting out of the creases. I only have, I think, this is pretty much my only mop brush that isn't a makeup brush. All right, so I think I already got most of the arm, but I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss a spot. Sam, stop. Don't worry, they're not going to. Sam has a toy, and he wants them to try and get it from him. So he sits there and growls at them. <laughs> He's just like egging them on. I have very goofy dogs. My friends came over for a game and I went to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I hear them, Debbie, and I'm like, uh-oh, what? <laughs> and Riley, or not really, Sam was underneath the table growling and they're like, uh, we don't want to fight down here. I'm like, oh no, he's fine. He literally growls but never does anything. In fact, sometimes I think his growl is a purr. Okay, so that one is done. And we just want to go over it and make sure that nothing is on 
it anywhere. So when it cures, it's not going to... Riley, off. Off. That one spot here. Looks like I had like a spot of red that dried and somehow just got like a splash of red on it or something. Okay. So I don't see any dust or anything on it that I need to get off. So I'll put it under the little tent thing over here to keep the dust off of it. Whoa! My waters. Did it spill? No, it didn't spill. I need to put more water in that one. I have these, whoopsie, sorry, water jugs like this that just have paintbrushes and other things sticking out of them so that when I get done, I just put it on there and then put it in the net I have showed you before and let it dry so it doesn't get dust on it but they uh, tipped over <laughs> the other day and I think I need to put more water in them because they're not um, they're not getting not they're getting too top heavy and falling over okay so now we got the leg. Oh, Riley goodness. Every nice. All right. And I always put the top back on my kabuki brush to make sure that it doesn't get any dust on it. Sam, stop. Stop. So, I need to check the time because my friend's calling to do a Bible study at 2.30. So I got to do this one quick because I have six minutes. Okay, so I'll check it and make sure that... There's nothing on it. That's one of those. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little black speck there. And that's one of those things where I think it gets like dust in the mold or something. Because I cannot get it off. I think I've got something in here in the crease. Oh, maybe it was just, sh just a shadow, I guess. Okay. Especially, especially want to check the creases and make sure that there's no specks in them. Alright. I think that's good. Alright. So now again we're going to stir it a little bit just to make sure. Let it. Nothing has settled and separated. So again, I'm going to take the brush and go between all the creases and all the toes. Sam, stop. <laughs> they just ignore him. They do that when he has something. Sometimes he'll have a bone or something and they come near him and he doesn't want them to take it. So he'll growl and they just go over and take it from him anyway. And he looks like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> so I never have to worry about him starting any fights or anything. He's way low man on the totem pole. Riley's alpha. Evie is beta. And he's like way down there. <laughs> 
Is it Zeppa or something like that? Is the, I don't know. Whatever the last alphabet letter in the, in Greek, that's what he is. Evie and Riley have tiffs every once in a while that I gotta break up. Because when we moved, or when we, before we moved in here, um, I had just Evie and uh, Sam. And so Riley was the alpha here and Evie was the alpha at our house. So they kind of had a problem when we first moved in. And try to try and figure out who was alpha over who. Try and hurry here. And again, make sure you get in all your creases. You don't want to have everything be all red and your creases be not white, but, you know, lighter. He here is just having it very, very, very translucent and adding layer after layer after layer. If you are, oops, I got more. If you try and, um, get it more can the paint more condensed so that you're quickening the process you're not going to have a good look to your doll the more translucent the better to a point i mean you don't want it just plain water but and again, I try and, oh, I think I forgot that on the arm, but I try and always go around the the joint a little more, as you want that a little more colored anyway for shadowing and stuff. But that way I make sure that there's no, it's not going to like, um, the that I get the paint on that lip there so it's not gonna I can't think of what I'm trying to say <laughs> but basically I don't I want to make sure that I have gotten all the way to the lip and over a little bit because I don't want it to eventually rub it off and rub it up there okay so that is done now whoops red spot there we go gotta be careful you don't want um, to leave spots on it and let them dry because if you do then you're just gonna have red spots you don't want that you want it to look natural I'm not sure why it did this, but there we go. If you have a, a spot you can't get off that's already like started to cure in there, then you can uh, use a toothpick. Make sure you wet the toothpick first, and then that will uh, allow you to rub it off ever so slightly so you're not rubbing off paint. I got a black spot here, but I think that's in the pen. Yeah, that's in the... Okay. That's something on the vinyl, so that's not going to come off. And since I use the other thing, I have all these little... <sighs> my kabuki brush. The, this is really good for taking stuff off, but it's got all these little teeny tiny hairs. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Oops. 
it's got all these little teeny tiny little hairs on it so sorry I can't I have my reading glasses on so I can't really tell whether that got a good picture of that or not but anyway okay so that one's done so I'll put it under here and then I'll try and come on a little bit later today and we'll do the next layer I got a hair on this I cannot get off and um, so I will see you guys a little bit later and I hope you guys have a great day and God bless bye bye Okay, I'm coming back on here. Turn my other light on. Because I forgot to tell you guys that when you are putting on these layers, it's really important. See how it beads up on there? Oh, uh, when... One th for one thing, when you're going like this, you're going to make splatters. Like see it right there there's um, some splatters that I just did so you want to make sure and get those off right away otherwise they'll just be red dots on your paint also this is going to beat up for the first couple um, layers like this so that's what you want to use your sponge for number one number two if you're sponging it off but it's still leaving little dots that means you need to get some liquid off of your um, little uh, cosmetic sponge because it's not absorbing the uh, paint enough And that's exactly why we why I use a mop brush too because you're trying to get in those creases so that that paint isn't pooling in there because then if it if you leave it pool in there it's not gonna look natural so if you're coming on here you put some paint on here and you put the paint on it and you still notice as you're trying as you're dabbing it that it's leaving spots take some paint off your sponge and then go back through and dab it again so you make sure that you don't want any paint at all pooling on the vinyl pooling paint is bad because that's going to leave spots and if it pools in the creases it's just gonna make it look bad so see I just put on some paint there and it's pooling so I took some some uh, liquid off my sponge and then I'm going over it again so that it makes sure it gets all and it's not taking off all the paint it's just taking off the excess and then what is left there will then See, there's a spot that it didn't see that evidently I splattered. So you either take your little makeup sponge thingy and put water on it and rub it off like that. If it won't come off that way, then you take a toothpick and make sure you get the toothpick wet and then you can scrub on top of it and it's not going to hurt your vinyl. Just don't you know really get in there and, and rub hard but the water on your um, toothpick is going to cause more friction so it comes off easier you just use a regular dry toothpick and you're going to have a heck of a time plus it's not it's going to take off more um, in spots and it's not going to take it off smoothly so it's basically going to leave like lines instead of like 
slowly taking off the paint. And you can do that with uh, any mistakes you make or anything too. Um, let's see, I just, oh, another thing I forgot to tell you, if you do mess up bad enough that you have to strip your, your kit, this is what I use. Sorry, I have on my, let me get on my other glasses so I can see if this actually is in focus. I am blind as a bat. Okay. So it's the, there you go, Windsor and Newton Brush Cleaner and Restorer. And after you use this, I use it with little makeup cleansing pads, the exfoliating kind. Um, some of them are better than others. I like the Kroger brand um, and the large exfoliating. Some of them, the... the they just like break apart when you're using them and I don't care for those. Um, so you use that with the brush cleaner to take off the um, paint and then you're gonna wanna do it just like you did when you first got the kit and wash it with Dawn soap to get all that because this, this is a very oily um, substance. So you got to wash it very well and I use a toothbrush to get in the creases and to take all those oils off otherwise your paint isn't going to stick on back on the vinyl. So um, I think that is all I forgot to tell you guys. I think, I think, I think. So yeah just make sure if you have any pooling you're blotting off your makeup sponge on a paper towel and then going back through. And uh, watch out that you don't have an area. If you have an area that you're like, I tend to like take off the dust and then wipe it on the paper towel, don't do that same area to do your sponge because if you do, you're just picking up that, that dust and lint and hair and putting it back on your vinyl. So kind of be aware of that so I think that is it so I will I'm gonna finish up doing these arms and legs um, and then I will come back on for our next layer and don't forget when you do your layer which I forgot last time to where's my pen no I don't know where my pen is right now but make sure you're checking off the layers that you do. And if I only have time to do part of it, I'll check it off, but then I'll put like leg, right leg only or something like that. And let myself know, okay, this is what I have left to do. I didn't put the layer on the whole kit. So I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as best I can. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. And God bless.